What's up everybody? It's Tate Stafford here and welcome to Marsh Matters, a segment where we investigate and educate about this ecosystem here and everything on the coast. Today, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, and we are going to investigate pluff mud, a huge component of this salt marsh ecosystem. Pluff mud, what is it exactly? Is it, you know, a bunch of silty sediment? Well, that would be correct, but not entirely. It's a bunch of sediment mixed with decomposed organic material. And what do I mean when I say decomposed organic material? We're talking about decaying plant matter. We're talking about snail poo. We're talking about a bunch of dead fish. We're talking about anything in this salt marsh ecosystem that can be broken down. And that is what creates what is before us, this beautiful landscape of pluff mud here. Let's go! So let's break it down. Pictured behind me is a beautiful pluff mud bank here, a very great example of what you see in this salt marsh habitat. Sitting on top of this pluff mud is what we call our Spartina grass, or salt marsh cord grass, a very important part of this ecosystem as well. We were talking earlier about that dark, rich color of the pluff mud here and how it's made up of 50% decomposed organic material. Not only does that Spartina grass survive and thrive on top, but it also dies. You can see it's already getting some of that coloration here. Woo! And some of the smell too. So when this Spartina grass dies, it starts to get broken down by the decomposing bacteria that are present in this mud. Those bacteria do a great job of turning that Spartina grass into this nice silty sediment conglomeration we see before us. What's that egg smell? Did I hear someone say eggs? That smell, ah, the smell of low tide here in the salt marsh, is actually hydrogen sulfide. Those bacteria that live amongst the pluff mud here release hydrogen sulfide as they are breaking down this organic material. So the next time somebody asks you, what's that smell? You can tell them, it's decaying organic matter. Yeah, baby. See ya! So we've discussed and investigated some important biological concepts when considering pluff mud. Now, let's take a moment and dive into the history. Back in the day, the indigenous people used pluff mud as fertilizer for their crops. The Europeans, however, didn't have as much success when trying to grow their crops, specifically rice, because they were using soil from the forest, which is not as nutrient rich as this pluff mud. The enslaved West Africans knew that in order to grow rice, you needed a real nutrient-rich soil. So that being said, the Europeans adopted their practices and started to put this pluff mud on their fields. Not only was pluff mud great fertilizer, but it also had some other ancient uses as well. The indigenous people here used to have to sit and bake under this low country sun in the summers. So they just take some pluff mud, you know, Boom, baby! SPF 9000 right there. Works as great sunscreen. They could also use it as bug repellent. So out there walking through the woods, they get really buggy, especially out here in the salt marsh too, with our no see -ems. You could just take some pluff mud up, rub it right on the skin. There we go. Who needs DEET when you have pluff mud? Because it's such fine grain sediment, Pluff mud is also known as low country quicksand, which is why birds can walk on it, but we cannot. Any bit of pressure you put into this pluff mud, you could get stuck. You can see my paddle here. Wow, look at that. All right, everybody. 
Thanks a lot for checking in with me on this segment of Marsh Matters. Hope you learned a lot about Pluff Mud today and its great effect on this salt marsh ecosystem. Once again, I'm your host, Tate Stafford. Until next time, I'm gonna go home.